بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سبحانك العلم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العلم الحكيم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Alhamdulillah, welcome back and thank you everyone for being here on time for our third topic of Adil Knowledge Retreat. Why does Allah allow suffering unpacking Allah's mercy? My name is Muhammad Fakhr Razi bin Muhammad Noor and I will be your MC and moderator for this last segment, inshallah. I hope everyone had a good break. Okay, cukup eh, inshallah. Okay, Alhamdulillah, we have listened to the first two topics which is the first one on even the prophets embracing a life of test by Ustaz Fatul Rahman Daud. And the second topic, between Reza and seeking help, correcting the misconception by Madam Hamida, Siti Hamidah Bahashwan. I'm sure by now we have better understanding on the topic, including the reason and wisdom why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing, testing us in this world, as well as how to seek help when we require the help. Now we shall move on to the third and final topic for today. Did God create evil? The notion of evil in Islam's perspective. Inshallah will be delivered by our first speaker, which is Al-Fadil Ustaz Fatur Rahman Daud. He is my teacher in the Madrasa when I was a student back then. Ustaz Fatur Rahman, inshallah, will speak for about 30, 40 minutes. And again, we will have a Q&A questions, Q&A session. And because of the limited time, probably you may want to write down your question, make it short, make it concise, and we shall have more session if you can ask two, three questions at one go, and then we can have another round if the time permits, inshallah. So without further ado, I would like to call upon Fadil Ustaz, Ustaz Fatul Rahman Daud, to deliver his speech. Fadil Mashkura. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innal hamdalillah nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa nasta'hdih wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa sayyiati a'malina man yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa man yudlilhu fala hadiya lahu wa ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna muhammadan 'abduhu wa rasuluhu amma ba'd. Thank you very much Ustaz Fakhrur. Uh, when he said that I'm his teacher, it makes me look very old. <laughs> but I'm still young, at least young at heart. <laughs> uh, this morning I told you that it's hard for me to deliver in Malay, oh, sorry, in English. And now, with this topic at an advanced level, the level of difficulty for me <laughs> berganda. You know why? <clears throat> because this topic actually needs a certain background. That's why they put it as advanced level. So <clears throat> hopefully, hopefully that we are here, we have that certain basic knowledge especially about the worldview of Islam. <clears throat> okay. uh, and I don't want to conduct this lecture, me, like a sage on the stage, but rather I like to guide at your side. Okay. <laughs> and I believe that we here are all adults. We have our own background knowledge, experience, that we can share together. And this topic, what I want is for us to reflect back. There's a, a most of them are conceptual. Most of them, uh, rather, we need the philosophical <coughs> background of it. Why does Allah allow suffering? If Allah is most merciful, why Allah allow suffering? Why Allah allow us, for example, as a Muslim who pray five times a day 
to suffer. Part of it, I did explain, and Puan uh, Hamida also I did explain certain things related to to the topic why Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala allow suffering for us. <clears throat> but again, with our educational background, different educational background, secular that differentiate between the worldly life and hereafter there's no connection sometimes that concept doesn't appear in our mind for a Muslim Alhamdulillah who, those who have that certain background knowledge of Islam why what what is the purpose of we as a human being being here why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us the one someone who knows about that alhamdulillah uh, they do <coughs> find ways how to rational rationalize things but just imagine just imagine someone with a little uh, background knowledge of islam the worldview of islam how can they relate if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most merciful why this happened these things happens to us as a Muslim we can see certain things happening in Syria for example certain things happening in the Arab world uh, recently Palu all Muslims how can I mean <clears throat> my son okay, although he grew up as a Muslim he looked at their parents me my wife, the grandmother, prays and every day, uh, you know, to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala five times a day. They ask difficult questions. Why must we pray? <laughs> yeah. Why must we pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? And this is seven years old kid. I have a student, uh, <coughs> not student of mine directly. In my institution, so one of the asatiza, one of the ustaza, came to me. Ustaz, <coughs> I have difficulty. One parent came to us and uh, telling me that to stop telling uh, young children in class that, for example, the non-Muslim will go to hell and the Muslim will go to heaven. <coughs> The parent say, one day when she came back, the, the, the daughter came back home, and then saying that I don't want to go to class anymore. <laughs> Why? Because my teacher said that the non-Muslim will go to hell, fire, and the Muslim will go to heaven. So why? The mother asked. She said, because I know that my friend, my neighbor, my close friend, will go to hell. <laughs> and I'm very sad. <laughs> and this, is, this come from kindergarten or preschool student. So how do we deal with that? Even me, Asatiza, or my, my <coughs> fellow Asatiza, I don't think that we can handle that professionally. But again, this is the thing that comes out from. And with we being all time educated <coughs> with a secular uh, point of view, worldview, <coughs> I can see the difficulties how to relate uh, what's happening in Islam, our belief, to what actually happened in their worldview. <coughs> but hopefully, uh, today, uh, no stress. <laughs> I don't want to make it very, very difficult, but it's for us to reflect and to ask questions. Ask questions. And I, I might, do, I do, maybe I don't have the answer for it. Okay. Maybe I can ask Usa Fahru, Fahru Razi, uh, our Sheikh here. What's your name again? Sorry, sir. Ilham. Uh, she's graduate, uh, he, he graduated from Al Azhar. Oh, inshallah. Uh, oh, Ustaz Taufik. I saw one. <laughs> yeah? We can 
all together share our experience. Okay. It is a hard thing, <coughs> it's a <coughs> hard question, but <coughs> let us go through it. And if we don't find the answer here, uh, hopefully in the uh, near future, inshallah. <coughs> Lagi saya Muka saya lagi ha. Betul eh okay. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says In the Quran <coughs> Qulillahu khaliku kulla shay Wa huwa al-wahidul qahar Say Allah is the creator of all things Everybody here believes right That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates everything Betul He is the one, the supreme and irresistible. And the second ayah, Allah SWT says, Alladhi ahsana kulla shay'in khalaqa. He who has made everything, he has created most good. Everything that he created is perfect, good. So what is our definition of evil who created evil if Allah created everything and all that he created is good the main question what is evil and who created it who can answer <laughs> huh? if someone asks Nam. If not Nabi Adam, Prophet Adam, uh, being chased from uh, heaven, we all not here. What was the relation to my question? <laughs> yeah, that, that's one the one thing that I will park. But again, my question is: If Allah created everything, and all, and uh, what is evil and Allah created everything is good what is evil and who created it <coughs> yeah shaitan shaitan created evil who created shaitan <laughs> if shaitan is the father of all evil <laughs> for example <laughs> okay who created shaitan huh? Allah created shaitan why is shaitan good? Yeah? Initially. Then he destroyed. This is something pernah ter, ter, ter apa? terbayang. Terfikir. Have you ask, ever asked this question? Yes, right. And this question has been asked now uh, by, the, by small kids. <laughs> right. But sometimes we don't have the answer. It's hard for us to give the answer. Why? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He creates, created everything and all His creation is good, why is there an evil and who created evil? <coughs> I don't want to answer now. Maybe I don't have a very perfect answer. Let's discuss later. But the notion of evil in Al-Quran, <coughs> how... Do they, how do Al-Quran interpret what are the meaning of evil in Al-Quran? They have different, when, when Allah SWT uses the, the word uh, evil in Quran, they have different meanings. I will just give a few. First, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ بِالشَّرِّ وَالْخَيْرِ فِتْنَةً And we test you by evil and by good by way of trials. Okay. What is evil here? We test you by evil and by good, by way of trials. What is evil here? Eh. What do Allah SWT mean by evil here? It's a general evil, basically. Some things that uh, we don't like. Disaster, for example. 
okay something bad happened to us uh, our our family close friends died for example right <coughs> okay but as a trial okay walau yaj'alullahu lin nasi sharra isti'jalahum bil khair la qudiya ilaihim ajaluhum the second ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says if allah were to hasten for men the evil they have earned as they would fain hasten on the good they would their respite be settled at once general evil but in this sense allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said is about al-maut death so death in a certain point of view it can be framed as an evil thing is 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 death an evil thing <laughs> if if someone died your close friend your close family member died is it an evil thing some might say that oh this is something bad happening to me but is it bad we need to ask that question is it bad is it evil but the word evil being used here <coughs> okay. the next ayah wa yad'u al insanu bi sharri du'a'ahu bil khair wa kana al insanu ajula and man praise allah for evil as he praise allah for good and man is ever hasty <coughs> I, i want you to concentrate on the last ayah <coughs> this ayah explains everything the meaning of evil and khair but is it possible wa asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khairul lakum but is it possible that we dislike a thing or you dislike a thing which is good for you and that you love a thing which is actually bad for you and at the end of the ayah says allah knows better so sometimes we see a things we define a certain things that happen to us as evil as sharr but is actually good for us khair the the the, the, the opposite of sharr evil is al khair is something good and sometimes allah says in this ayah when we see a certain things maybe we see it as a positive things good things but actually is not good for us so what should we do <laughs> as a muslim as a believer what should we do we just ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the good things will happen to us sometimes is it in in our perspective is bad but we know that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows better yeah? and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make good things come out from that what we see as a bad thing <coughs> again i just throw out questions here at the first stage boleh eh still okay <laughs> allah subhanahu taala says in the quran kul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq min sharri ma khalaq say I seek refuge with the Lord of the dawn from the evil acts of his creatures. Okay, some some interpretation ada kesilapan there's a uh, what I think there's a <coughs> uh, mistranslated. Okay. Some some translate that min sharri ma khalaq from the evil of his creation. From his creation. So I seek refuge with the Lord of the dawn from the evil of Allah's creation. I mean from from the evil that Allah created. I think that is not quite uh, a good translation. The translation that I think is uh, it's suitable is from the evil act of his creation creatures. That means the evil act of us as a creatures. So again from the first question right who created evil is it us we ourselves that creates evil as a creature or allah subhanahu wa taala <coughs> and 
And last question. Is the existence of a powerful and merciful God compatible with the existence of evil and suffering in the world? Is the existence of powerful and merciful merciful God, Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala? Eh? We know that Allah is the most powerful, betul? And we know that Allah is the most merciful. But is it compatible with the all the existence of evil and suffering in this world? <coughs> One thing I want to ask before I answer again the, all the questions is Allah only merciful and powerful? Yeah? What? Allah also? Allah also? Yeah? Just? Betul. It's a, it's a powerful word. <laughs> Just? Kita, kita tahu kan Allah Subhanahu taala Maha adil. Adil. Our program today adil. <laughs> Allah lagi and another attributes of Allah give me. Ha? Eh? Forgiving. Lagi compassionate. Other than that Wisdom Allah ada hikmah tak? Allah knows everything Right? Okay <coughs> Sorry, I changed my slide here Tapi I tak change kat sini <laughs> okay. So Allah The merciful and powerful According to Al-Quran God is Al-Qadir Meaning the all-powerful And Ar-Rahman Meaning the merciful which also implies compassion okay islam requires that mankind know and believe in god of power mercy and goodness in general okay but is god only the merciful and all powerful the answer is allah has many names and attributes brother how 99 only restricted to 99 no Maybe more than that. But Allah gives us the knowledge. We only know that uh, the 939 attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. We all hafal, right? Hafal tak? Nas'aluka ya man. Hafal, eh? We do memorize that. But do we do we know the meaning? The, the hadith say that man hafizaha Dakhalal Jannah Betul Whoever Memorize it Will go to Jannah Then we, we also pun memorize right? Nas'aluka ya man What's the meaning? Don't know <laughs> okay. Actually What I understand eh, The Arabic term Man hafizaha Correct me If I'm wrong Sheikh Man hafizaha Whoever protect What means protect Is not just to Memorize it. Okay. When we know that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, Dia lah yang maha apa pengijab kabul, for example, who, who he will give anything for one who who, who ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So if we know that anything that <coughs> befalls on us, we will ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. If we know that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knows everything that we do, so bear in mind. That Allah SWT knows So we jaga-jaga Man hafizaha So every Attributes of Allah SWT Have that meaning That we need to understand And we need to uh, Hafizaha tu Maknanya jaga To <coughs> To ensure that We imply Imply that In our daily lives Understand? Understand? If We do that with all the 99 names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, we will go to Jannah. <coughs> okay. Allah has many names and attributes. These are understood historically by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala oneness. Again, we need to see everything holistically. For instance, one of his names is Al-Hakim, meaning the wise. 
<coughs> the most wise. Since the very nature of God is wisdom, it follows that whatever he, <coughs> whatever, <coughs> sorry, whatever he wills is in line with the divine wisdom. Uh, this magic word, the divine wisdom, sometimes the structure, the secular structure, cannot in line with this, this thing. The divine wisdom. What is divine wisdom? We cannot think about that with divine wisdom. We cannot see. We cannot sense it. Betul tak? Okay. But as a Muslim, as a believer, we do believe with this uh, uh, divine wisdom. <coughs> His, he wills is in line with the divine wisdom. Give you an example. <coughs> It says here, Allah's wisdom is unbound and complete. Whereas we have limited wisdom and we have limited knowledge. Allah has the totality of wisdom and knowledge. We just have its particulars. In the line below, I put it as Allah has the picture and we only have one pixel of it. We don't have clearly see the the bigger picture. So if, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do something, the, what do you call it? Uh, 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 bad things happen in Palu, for example. Bad things happen in Syria. Bad things happen in us. Sometimes we need to see it as a bigger picture. But we can't. My father died. Maybe my close friend died. We only see in that area, in front of us, but we cannot see the bigger picture. Maybe with that makes me become a stronger person. Okay, that we I can bear with all the the the, the trouble and uh, adversity. <coughs> okay, just because we cannot access the divine wisdom doesn't mean that it does not exist. It exists. And doesn't mean because the secular framework it, they they can't they cannot differentiate. They said no. What is dif, uh, divine wisdom? This reasoning is typically when we say that uh, what is divine wisdom? I cannot even think of, of it. It's like a toddler kind of uh, what they call it uh, argument. You know when a toddler, the kita the budak budak kecil kan. When we say that. We, we ask them not to uh, eat a lot of sweets. Do you think that they can understand why? <laughs> they, they only say that, why my father, my, my parents not allowing me to do that? Because they don't see the, what's the bigger picture, what's the consequences. Later part, bila dia dah besar dah apa, these things will come to them. <coughs> Furthermore, sometimes we misunderstand the definition and nature of God. Uh, what is the nature of God? From the, all the attributes, kita tahulah. And also, kita lupa, we forget what is the purpose of us being here in the, in the world. In my previous uh, talk, I did explain that <coughs> kita dijadikan we are here with one purpose. What is it? Siapa ingat? With one purpose. Eh? Khalifatullah okay. fil art. Okay. Sebagai khalifah di muka bumi. And then apa yang kita perlu lakukan? Ibadah. Wa ma khalaqtul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun. Aku tidak jadikan manusia dan jin, I do not created the, the 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 human beings and the jin unless for them to do uh, or what they call ibadah. Worship me. So kalaulah kita tahu if we know 
the purpose of us being here and our deal with Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala first time when we say when Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala say Allah stubi rabbikum am i not your lord Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says and we say what qalu bala indeed indeed you are our lord Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala but after we are here then we forget everything Betul? Then we 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 forget what is our purpose of being in the world, who is our Lord, and so forth. <coughs> yeah. Masih lagi conceptual. <laughs> Bear with me, eh? Well, yeah. <coughs> and this conceptual thing, uh, sometimes we cannot. As a human, we need to know there's a boundaries. We cannot know beyond certain things what is the wisdom behind that we know that we are only humble allah servant of allah we know that our knowledge is limited allah knows everything we know that certain things we don't know what is the hikmah <coughs> beyond it i give you one uh, story right <coughs> everybody knows about the uh, story of khidir and Musa tahu kan ya apa cerita dia why when when people ask who is the most knowledgeable what is his answer what is nabi Musa's answer the prophet Musa's answer siapa like but what is his answer when people ask him who is the most knowledgeable among us okay in this world at that point of time who is the most knowledgeable apa dia jawab eh siapa i am the <laughs> i am the most knowledgeable kenapa eh? nabi Musa ni orang dia sombong ah <laughs> eh? no because just imagine as a as a prophet i'm a prophet allah swt i i get knowledge direct from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course at that point of time he assumed that he is the most knowledgeable betul but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what did allah say no there's another person that is more knowledgeable than you and after that khidir uh, sorry uh, nabi musa alaihi salam ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me permission for me to see this guy uh, by the way in the quran the he, he the quran didn't mention the word khidir it's only in the uh, prophetic tradition of the hadith that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam mentioned the word khidir uh, then then the the word khidir also can be pronounced as khidir khudur hadar pelbagai lah uh apa tadi sorry oh he asked permission from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ya allah can you give me permission to meet this guy then allah granted permission for musa to meet <coughs> and then long story make it short when when nabi musa alaihi salam met khidir okay, nabi musa has his own revelation eh? betul eh syariat dia tersendiri when he met khidir <coughs> He said that I want to learn from you. I want to follow you and learn from you. Apa Khidir cakap? What Khidir said? Falan tatas tatik ma'ya sabra. You will not be patient with me. How can you be patient with something that you don't know about? You have no knowledge about. Sama lah kita kan. Kita selalu istijal. Uh, baca certain, we read a certain post in, uh, in apa? in in the facebook and so on we terus patak 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 laju je <laughs> we want to comment with our little knowledge <clears throat> okay anyway he say please give me a chance for me to follow you and learn from you okay because allah subhanahu wa taala say that you are more knowledgeable from me <clears throat> so khidir say okay i allow you to 
to follow me and learn from me. So, in one occasion, they want to cross a river or a sea. I think it's a river he mentioned. <clears throat> then this owner of a ship allowed them to to ride the, the, the ship. And they give them food. They, I mean, the, the, the owner of the ship give them uh, give Nabi Khidir and Musa alayhi salam food and everything, place to stay on top of the ship. After they are all busy with doing uh, doing something, Nabi Khidir took something and hammered the 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 ship. That makes the ship sink. Why? What did Musa say? Musa say, "Are you crazy?" <laughs> I mean, not not that that is specific, will uh, okay? But say, "Why why are you doing this?" Then Nabi Khidir said, "Sure, I told you that you will not have patience following me." That's one story, right? Nabi Musa say, "Give me la last one chance, okay? One more chance, okay? Don't la to akhizni and hara." Then they go on a journey. They see a young boy. They saw a young boy. What did Khidir do to the, this young boy? Anyone? They killed the, the young boy. Why? This is something that is big. You know, as a, as a prophet, you know that in your Sharia, in, your, in the revelation that you cannot kill a person, especially a young boy that have no sin. But Khidir killed him. And this also shows, okay, sideline, this also shows that, uh, in my opinion, Khidir is a Nabi. He's a pro prophet, not a saint and so forth. But, uh, like some uh, other, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, other uh, interpretation. <coughs> okay. And the third one, and, and again, again, uh, Khidir said, see, I told you not to ask question. Falantas tatik maya sobro. You will not have patience uh, following me. So that's it. And Nabi Musa say, please, Khidir, one last chance. One last chance. At least three. Eh? <laughs> okay. They go into a village, a town, and there's uh, oh, and then before that they ask for food and so forth. And then the whole town rejected them and then they went off. Uh, just at the end of the village, there's a wall, okay, wall to the uh, breakdown, robo. Then Khidir asked Musa, help him to build up again that wall. Right? Then Musa said, why? Why are you doing this? They, uh, they throw us from the village, they don't help us, and now you're helping them building that wall. Okay? Again, Hedir say, told you three times, right? <laughs> this is the last time. Falantas tatik ma'aya sabra, you will have no patience following me. And then Hedir told Musa what's happening, what's really happening. Okay, The first one, Tyrant was seizing all good ships. If that ship remained in good shape, it would have been seized from the owner and that's worse. And that is worse than having to repair a few planks of the ships. So, they bocorkan sikit. Eh? So, at the end of the day, all the, and all the tyrants say, oh, this is a, a bad ship. They will just leave it there and they can still recover from it. <clears throat> Second one, he was not a believer, the young boy. But his parent was righteous. Believing people, if he had lived, he would have caused them distress, the parents distress, oppression, and sorrow. Okay. And the third one, under, under the wall was hidden treasure that belonged to two orphans. Due to their father being righteous, Allah wanted their treasure to be safe and hidden until they were old enough to use it wisely. What's the lesson that we can take from this? 
Again. Huh? What's the lesson? <laughs> huh? If we see a small kid, nampak lain macam aja, we can kill. <laughs> Nampak motor orang macam tak betul je Nampak motor ustaz If you see ustaz Taufik Motorcycle Pecah kan <laughs> eh? oh, Another 2 minutes Seriously Give me 5 minutes I belum sampai lagi akhir dia <laughs> This shows us that there is a Wisdom Certain things Knowledge That beyond our Our knowledge that we have And this is what we are, we are seeing is the Prophet, Prophet Musa. And Prophet Musa that received wahyu from Allah SWT, certain things also. Again, if we have faith in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, we know that Allah SWT is wise, the most wise. He has his wisdom and so forth. Certain things we need to put in a certain perspective and don't try to come into conclusion okay. <clears throat> okay. I try to be fast in two minutes eh? okay. Khidir was the one whom Allah SWT had given knowledge of the reality behind the perceived evil and suffering and he had not given it to Musa with reference to the statement you will not be able to bear with me patiently it means you will not be able to accompany me when you see me doing things that go again against your law uh, against that something we can rationalize okay? because i have knowledge from allah subhanahu taala and that he has not taught you and you have knowledge from allah that he has not taught me this is from ibn kathir but doesn't mean doesn't mean Okay. Uh, later, for example, if you see me, eh, mm, minum whiskey, ke, drink whiskey, beer, and say, "Why, Ustaz, Ustaz, why you do that?" Oh, I have <laughs> certain wisdom that you don't know. <laughs> you look that as a whiskey or beer or alcohol, but in my perspective, it's something that I. Uh, something that 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 that, that Allah Subhanahu Taala allows me. Uh, if you see some guru <laughs> satiza like that, uh, then uh, go and call Muiz, ask them to do something. <laughs> and then he said, "You can you you remember the Khidir and Musa story? <laughs> no, eh? Because at the end of the day, the revelation ended. Okay, Aliyama Akmal Tulakum Dinakum. So what?" Uh, our Prophet Muhammad SAW brings us if this is haram this is okay then that's it okay? you cannot interpret it uh, by your own evil and suffering are part of a divine purpose God does not create pure evil rather in everything that he creates is a wise purpose by virtue of what is good okay? again he creates a wise purpose by virtue of what is good okay? however there may be some evil in it For some people, and this is partial. It's a partial evil, we call it. In a certain perspective, it is evil, but in the greater picture, the whole picture, it is good. We need to believe that. <clears throat> Relative evil. As for the evil of absolute evil, the Lord is... How do you pronounce that? Exonerated. Uh, exonerated of that. This is from Ibn Taymiyyah. Okay? How many slides do I have? Okay, one, uh, two minutes. Slides, boleh eh? Another one or two minutes. <laughs> okay, life is a test. Uh, I explained this before, so I don't want to go deep. We know that uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala khalaq al mauta wal hayat al yabl wa kum ayyukum ahsanu amal. Allah created death and life so that He may put you into test. So the greater picture is a test for us. It's a, it's something good for us. Although death comes, we might see that as an evil, evil thing, especially to our beloved ones. But as a, a whole picture, uh, it's a good test for us. <clears throat> okay, this is uh, our purpose. I already explained in the first part. 
وما خلقت الجن والانس الا ليعبدون اي دي نوت كرييت ايذر جن اور مان اكسبت تو ورشيب مي ذيس وي نيد تو بوت انسايد اور سيلف نيد تو ريمبر ات اني بوينت اوف اور تايم وما خلقت الجن والانس الا ليعبدون اور بيربس مين بيربس اس عباده الله Okay. At the end, just to finish this, uh, one narr- narration from Muslim, Imam Muslim. Amazing is the affair of believers. Verily, all of his affair is good. So, from the perspective of believers, everything is good. And this is no, for no one except the believer. If something good hap- or happiness befalls him, He is grateful, and that is good for him. If something of harm befalls him, he is patient, sabar again, as what I explained, and that is good for him. Okay. I don't want to answer the first few questions at this first slides. I hope that we can discuss later on the Q and A. I want also to to hear what is your view. Okay. How can we uh, see? in a bigger picture in a clearer picture if allah most powerful most merciful and his wisdom why all this happening to us uh, especially as a muslim okay and um, with that i just stop here i think and maybe i can give the mic to uh, ustaz fakhrur